Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at uh, the mesh light feature for RenderMan, which is essentially creating a uh, polygon a, or a mesh and assigning a light to be projected out of that polygon. So we can use any polygon. I'm going to use a cube for this particular example and just move it into this geometry that I've already placed in the scene. Then I'm going to go back to my RenderMan shelf and I'm going to have the object selected. I'm going to click this button here, which is the Pixar Mesh Light button. And then you get something that looks like this. And I'll do a quick render to show you what happens. All right, so you'll see that we've got a cube now projecting light in all directions. And you can further adjust this if you wish. If you can just go to the Hypershade Editor and go to Lights, and then you've got your Pixar Mesh Light there. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just like any of your other lights, uh, the basic rectangle light or the disc light or any of those lights got the same parameters. So intensity, as you increase it, obviously you get a more intense light. Something you will notice though, on uh, if you're using a mesh that's got more polygons, you will end up with more lights because uh, more noise because you could essentially think of each face uh, is projecting its uh, as being its own light source so it takes longer it, it's 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 harder for render man to c calculate bounces and that sort of thing for global illumination so that's why even at a, at a reasonable um, sample rate um, you'd probably find that you get more noise than normal than if you were just using say a single rectangle light um, and aside from that all your other normal things are there you can change the color etc etc um, so that's pretty straightforward I'm not going to get too far into that uh, what's actually interesting about this is you could combine this with a couple of things as well so if I just go into the hyper shade editor now so you'll notice a couple of things you've got our, our light thing there um, but you've also got this Pixar black node assigned into the surface shader which is essentially a placeholder. It doesn't actually do anything. If you look at its attributes, it doesn't really have any. Uh, so you could just delete that if you wanted to, but obviously if you did that, I'll show you, you'll have your object being unshaded in your uh, viewport. So you could, however, assign a volume, for instance, to this. So you can go into your volume material uh, and then just go down to your render man and go to volume. and just delete its other node. Uh, so with your volume attached to it, um, we can just leave the settings as standard for now. And then to make it so you can actually see what's happening, I'll just drop another polygon cube in the scene. Actually, I might make that a sphere to make this a bit more obvious. And if I run that IPR, you can see that now our light cube is um, emissive as well as being sort of transparent and having volume. So if I went back into the uh, Hypershade editor and selected our volume, then with the attribute editor, uh, we can adjust things like the density to make the volume a little bit more transparent. The difficult thing about this though, when you're using a volume shader on it is that it still appears to have quite a bit of volume even when it doesn't because the light itself is illuminating the edges or the sort of the fa outside faces of the box. So you'll want to sort of balance that out with the intensity of your light. So if I do that, you can sort of see it a bit better now. Um, so that's sort of something to keep in mind. I'm not 100% certain when you necessarily want to use this particular technique. Uh, maybe if you had some fog that you wanted to be emissive, you can obviously have your um, You can obviously have your Pixar volume shader have its own emit color, but um, the difference is with the Pixar volume is that it doesn't, it only emits color uh, within itself. It doesn't actually transfer that color. It doesn't emit it out of the shader itself onto the background. So it doesn't work as a light source essentially. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one simple thing you could do. So obviously you could use the uh, mesh light for something a little bit more complex like this text that I've just created here um, in 3D coat very quickly and just designed a mesh. And this is actually quite a high poly mesh. So you'll notice that there's a bit of noise there. Um, the mesh itself is 5,000 faces. So um, it would take a little bit longer to render this because if it's all its faces and because of all the, the places that lights are coming from, essentially um, it's like having 
a light in the scene for at least every single one of those letters and then some for all the extra faces. So if you're going to use this technique, try and keep it as simple as possible unless you're prepared to render for a while. But you know, you can, you can see that it'd be quite useful for doing something like neon signs. So, you know, you get that sort of effect when you're applying a color to it. So, you know, if you've got some text as a mesh, you could easily do something like this for a neon sign in your cool cyberpunk scene. Um, and just finally, while we're talking about mesh lights, it's probably worth uh, once again reminding you of another way that you can uh, use a mesh to project light out of. Um, so you'll remember this leaf from one of my previous tutorials about how to render a realistic leaf ish, realistic ish leaf. Um, so this has just got a Pixar surface shader applied to it. So here's the hypershade editor. Um, and let's graph that out. So we could make this leaf glow. I had someone specifically ask me about this. This is why I'm going into it. Um, using the glow feature, just increasing the gain on it. And um, you will notice I've got no lights in the scene. Um, if I run an IPR, you will get a glowing leaf. However, obviously the disadvantage currently is that our leaf is white instead of having its green color. Um, we could fix that just by running our texture node um, for our leaf into the color of the glow. Um, so if I just select the uh, Pixar surface and then hit the three button on the keyboard to expand it and then type in, uh, select this box here and type in glow. We can run the glow color into that as well. We'll just control the gain using the slider. So you can obviously slide that down to have less emission, more emission. Uh, actually, I might need to put a light in this scene because it appears that it's using its global light, which is no good. Okay, so I've chucked a light in the scene. It's just not visible. Um, so yeah, you can see that it's emitting light and it's glowing internally. You could combine this with things like subsurface scattering to make it look like it's emanating from inside of it. Um, but um, I'll leave that to maybe a separate how do I render tutorial or something like that. But you know, if this is what you're looking for, this is a pretty quick way to do it. The noise isn't too bad, but once again, it sort of works in the same way that the uh, mesh light does in which it, because there's so many polygons, they all, 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 every polygon is almost acting as its own light uh, his own rectangle light so you will end up sort of getting more noise but um yeah that's pretty much a pretty short one uh for this tutorial i've got a really good tutorial coming up uh so make sure you are subscribed to the channel to check that one out it will probably be out on monday uh this coming monday and uh, if you like this tutorial though, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, join all the cool people on the Facebook group, uh, the Small Robot Studio Facebook group, link in the description. If you want to get on there, you want to share your work, or you want to ask me questions, that's a good place to do it, as well as the comments below. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching, and happy rendering.